G'day viewers and welcome to this special episode of PB's Retro Restorations. Uh, this is a how-to video that Mike from Mike's Bodden Customs suggested I make. Said he would be interested in the process I use to make cardboard cartons. Uh, a couple of people have asked me about it. Uh, I've been working on it for a long time. I've had three or well, two unsuccessful attempts. Hopefully you all think this one's successful. Um, I found it difficult to get what goes on in my brain out into a least somewhat useful instructional video. So uh, it's a long one, uh, but you can always skip to the you know the bits that you want. I'll put chapters in the description and all that gear. This video is long enough without me adding to it. Although I do have a certain charm that brings people back, so maybe you know. Too much of me is barely enough, but I doubt that. All right, let's get on with it. Well, let's get cracked lacking, I'm supposed to say, aren't I? Right. Need more of these. Okay, viewers, this is about my third time trying to make this video about cartons, so if this is a bit weird, I apologise. So, okay, I want to make a carton of the Corgi 253 Mercedes Benz. Uh, so, I'll kick off. I'm just Google that Corgi Toys 253 Mercedes Benz and I'll click on images, 5 million images. Okay, what we're looking for here is images that are three things high resolution, reasonably straight on, as straight as we can get them, and that aren't so damaged that they're going to, you know take forever to to repair so i'm already looking at this one looks good hmm this is this is excellent why is it excellent because it looks like it's a high resolution image it's nice and straight and it's you know we've got the end flap so let's visit that let's see if they've got some other images we can use and they do but here's our problem these, the end flap images are really good. But we haven't got a straight on. We can already see that the original of this box has two image, like different images on each side of it. So, but that's okay. We are going to use this one. All right, so what makes this a good candidate is it's nice and square. It's clear. It's only got a couple of small little blemishes on it here and here, which we can fix. Now save image. Uh, make a little folder. New folder. Call it whatever you want, like Corgi 253 Benz. Let's just do that. Save it. Now we're going to try and find the other pace, other pictures of the same size of the box. Now, this one's good. It's excellent. You'll get to notice also in the Googles is when you put your roll, your little hand over the thing, you'll see down the bottom corner here where I'm pointing at. It'll have the, you know, the dimensions of the, the image. So this is a thousand by seven three three. So we know that's a good resolution image. Sometimes you'll come across these and they'll be three hundred by two hundred. And you you know you don't even need to bother saving them. They're gonna be cactus. So alright. Can we get an image of the other side? With the boot open we can that's pretty good too. And again, see here, two th like that's that's how many pixels it is, for like height and width wise. So if it's got that many, it's going to be a good image. So we'll save that one. This is really nice too. So we'll save that. Okay, so now we've been pretty lucky there. We've got you know four images that were pretty straight on. So now we've got them saved. Open up that folder. And then we we'll just double click on it. Bingo. Okay. Now, 
this is pretty straight image. But if we see up the top here in the left hand corner where I put my pointer, I've got the edit image. Click that. And it brings this up. Now we've got all our you know other options, crop, adjustment, all this stuff. So we're gonna start with crop. We're gonna bring it down and not right on the edge, a little bit above it, okay? Same here. You can see how crooked this is. It's, it's not gonna be perfect, so get your arrow and hold this down the bottom. And then if that, what that does is let you move it left and right. Now that's why we don't wanna crop right in, because if you try, need to tip it too far, it's gonna zoom in and it's gonna be no good. So wherever you've got these gray grid lines, have a look and just see just straighten it up a bit and sometimes it doesn't take an awful lot but then I reckon I've got that there that's as close as we want to go I'll then bring it in a little bit more a little bit more you know you can see here how we've made the top and the bottom edges straight but the edges are always going to be a little bit cattywampus so Go up to save options, just save it. It doesn't matter, you don't need to change its name. Close it. Just go into your bar down the bottom. Paint 3D, start typing. You don't want paint, you want paint 3D. Paint 3D is a bit simpler and a bit easier. So we want to open, browse files, Go to wherever your folder is, mine's in downloads for whatever reason, there it is, Corgi 253 Benz, there's our image, bang, okay. Now, do you remember what I said about high resolution images? This is what I mean, we can go in this close before we start seeing the squares, which is good because when we've got it in our hand and it's this big, it's going to look great, okay. So, let's start by now cropping it down close to where we want it. So... That looks good to me. Here, we're not gonna go, you know, crazy. I mean, it's up to you, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's good. Now this side, because it's a bit crooked, like bring it in, you see like, to like a middle point. Because if you try and bring it in all the way here, then it's gonna look stupid when you finish, so. Just go close. Same on this side. That looks good to me. And click done. Okay. Let's start with this side. How do we get rid of this and still make it match? Because you might think, okay, I'll get a brush and I'll get my pencil and oh, there's a yellow. And I'm just going to go, well, that's not going to work, is it? It looks awful. So what we want to do is click select. Somewhere here where the image is, the yellow is still good. We're going to click, hold, drag down. Now we've got that. We want to go control C for copy. Control V for paste. Then click it in the middle. When while you hold that button down, slide it over. Oh, oh, it's gone, and the yellow matches. We still got this bit down here, Peter. I know. So we're going to do, you know, copy, paste. This bit here and by doing it this way what it does is it helps to blend the yellows together so control c control p drag it over till the blue is gone okay at the top here we've got a couple of marks so we might like to get rid of them what i would suggest you do here i mean like because this box is pretty good we could just you know copy click and drag Copy, paste. Oh, 
you know, it is a really crude way of doing it, but it works for me. So another way you might like to resolve that blemish is clicking your pencil, pixel pen. Clicking the thimble here, or the eyedropper they call it. Well, it's not a thimble, an eyedropper. Click that and somewhere near it, get that color match. Now, if I go straight 100 opacity, it's gonna make a liar of me now. It didn't actually look that bad. I like to back it off a little bit. This is where there's gonna be trial and error things, viewers. Bonk, bonk. See, sometimes I can do this and it doesn't match and it looks awful. This is matching really good. Ooh. If you make a blue like that, just control Z and you're back, undo. And I know some of you will be looking at this and go, oh, who doesn't know about control Z, pen? Who doesn't know about those things? Well, you know what? Plenty of people don't. And that's why I mention it because we're not all born with a computer in our hands and Mrs. PB often tells me you know I go who doesn't know that and she'll say well not everyone does know that so okay it's looking pretty good we've got this spot under the boot we'll fix that give it a touch up now we're lucky here because this yellow is pretty pretty good uh, the blue is going to be a different story, but we'll get that out in a minute. Yeah, let's see if this will match, because this might be a little bit too dark. Yeah, that's no good. Okay. Copy, paste, get that. Uh, and then drip. See, that's going to work for me there. We copied it, we pasted it, we brought it down here. Now, while it's still got that thing around, you've got all these little boxes around it. Get the one that's got that straight arrow on it. Hold it, drag it across. Obviously checking that it's not going over any of your writing. It's probably not going to match down here now. That's okay, we'll get our pixel pen and just was it a little bit. Hmm, that looks terrible. Okay, so down, down, now we get from this side. If you get in really close, you'll see how like it may not match in places, and that's just going to be the way it is. Okay, now the blue side. Now, because the blue side's got this pattern like in it, if you try and go like use the same thing, eyedropper or blue. You're going to see it a mile away. And yes, it looks nice where you fix it. Okay, so we don't want to do that. We're going to use our select, drag and copy method. Like here, we're going to copy it. We're going to paste it. Drag it up a little bit. Paste it. Drag it up a little bit more. Okay, go on. This side, click, drag down, being careful not to pick up the edge of the C because you'll notice it. Control copy, control paste. You know, do it. A... Got this bit down here now. 
copy paste. Copy paste. And you know, sometimes it's going to seem like the most tedious thing in the world, and sometimes it is, viewers. But if you want it to look nice, that's what it takes. No, I mean, we're essentially, we're, we're using other bits of the image to fix, using good bits to fix the bad bits. That was a bit crooked, wasn't it? Okay, that's better. All right, and that's a pretty basic example of how I will tidy up an image. Once you've done that, what I like to do is get the pixel pen, click that, and bring the thickness of it down to one, which means it's one whole square. Get your black, and then go right in, and start drawing a border around the image. The reason I like to do this will become apparent later, but it is gonna save you all sorts of grief down the road. So I want you to, you know, I'm sure there's experts at this are having a right chuckle at me at the moment, but this is how I do it. If you've got other tips for me on other ways I can do it, well, let me know. Okay, so now we've got that all the way around. We want to save that image. And then we're going to do the same to all those other images using similar techniques. So before I move on to the next image, because we've got them from different websites, or even if you get them from the same website, you can see here that they're different shades of yellow. And we'd really like them to match up. So what we can do is we can go to the edit on this one we haven't modified yet. We can go to the sun one in brightness and just see if brightening the image will help bring the colours a bit closer. But if you go too far it's going to look like crap so if you can't do it within a little bit we might have to try something else. Let's do one of the end flaps. Top it down. This one doesn't even really need straightening. Which is good. Save it, close it. Okay, so select a crop. Bring it in on each side so it's close to the as close to the edge as you can go without going over. Okay. And again, like before, we're just going to go select, click. That's no good because we picked up the E. Drag, paste, paste. Paste, copy,
Okay. Okay. So we'll save that. All right, so now we've restored all our sides of our carton. We put our black line around each one, which will help. I'll, I'll show you how that helps. What we're going to do is open Paint 3D. Do, 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 do. Can I open my first image? Okay, so we've got the first side. Yeah, you know, like we did before, I'm going to open the canvas. Get your canvas and see over here, you've got these might be checked on yours when you open them. If I haven't mentioned it before, uh, so uncheck resize, uncheck lock aspect ratio, and make your canvas bigger to work with. Okay. Next, go back to your folder, copy your Corgi Toys side panel, go back to your paint, stick it in, so to speak. All right, we'll bring it down here. Now, because we've got those black lines around the outsides, we know exactly where we're going to put it. Right, we're good. Or are we, Peter, because that's awfully small. Yes, it is awfully small, viewers. Now, what we want to do is stretch this and make it bigger. Now, if you just grab one of these things and go moving it, oh, yeah, that's good, but it's not really, is it? And you'll never get it exactly where you wanted it before, okay? So, before you do that, hold down the Shift key. This locks you know, the height and width and everything, so it stays as it should. Now zoom in, make sure you get it right. Okay, and bring it down. Oh God, okay. We're good. Now, Go to your folder with your things again, get your other side, copy it, come back here, paste it. Now because I was careful when I made these sides, I made them sure that they're exactly the same. Okay, now you might want to adjust this because it's not quite lined up. That's up to you. Um, it's easy done. We can just highlight the area we want, you know, by clicking and dragging. Copy paste it. Slide it over till it kind of matches a bit better. Of course, you're going to want to copy and paste and cover up the bit that it missed. Okay, so now we're a bit closer. If you want this a bit darker to match the other ones, you can have a go, like a trial and error. Go to your paint bucket, get your eyedropper, get that color there. Now here you want your opacity, opacity, oh, I can't say that word, probably got something wrong with me. Put it down to 47, wind your tolerance back to like three and click in there and mm, see that doesn't really work it's up the tolerance a bit to nine okay give it a couple of clicks if you want there we go the only downside of that is we kind of lost the texture but we could perhaps avoid that by winding the opacity back a bit more mm. I think I might leave it the way it is. Anyway, that's up to you. Okay. Now, because we've changed the side panel to match the other one, we can 
highlight that. Make sure to get it right on the line, like that. Control C, copy, Control V, paste. Holding down shift to make your job a little bit easier. Click it in the middle. Whoops, that's not right. That didn't really work, did it? Okay. That's better. And drag it up. Okay, going close. And bring it down. Okay. Looking pretty good so far, isn't it, viewers? Okay. At this stage, we'll also do our little... We need to put a little bit of a flap there for gluing. Um, you'll see me, no doubt, several times putting too much glue on them when I make them. Okay, so get that end bit with the colour with no letters. Copy it, paste it. Slide it up. See, so just over the line but still matching. Okay. Then highlight some of it while staying within the border of it. And drag it up about a third of the way that you guesstimate. It doesn't really matter. You can go, you know, a bit higher if you want, but that's far enough. I'll go then go to 2D shapes up the top here. Then to the angle one. And I'll go down here. I mean, this doesn't really matter either. You can just cut it, but I like to do it because it looks a bit nicer. Uh, can make it a bit thicker if you like. Make it white. Stamp it. Now if you stamp it instead of ticking it, you can slide it over here. Use the flip duver here. Click that. There you go. It's exactly the same angle on the other side. That way we can just slide it to where we want it. Don't worry too much if it goes over the corner because we'll fix that in a minute anyway. Uh, more important is you want it up the top. There we go. And again, this is part of the carton. No one's going to see. Now you can tick it because we don't need it anymore. Let's just get your eraser. Rub that bit out. Drag over the side. Get rid of that one. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is put our lines all around, like extend them out so they go every which way. I'll show you what I mean. Go to brushes, get your pixel pen, make it black, put the opacity up to 100, your thickness down to 1, and get in tight and start doing those lines I'm sure there's a faster way of doing this viewers but this is again how I do it and drag it all the way out probably not quite that far out but you know about as wide as your canvas is then copy it and click it into place and then you can just go paste and do it on each line. I'm going to do that and we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so I've done that now. I put lines through each part of the carton where it's going to fold. Include well, and down the bottom as well. That's not a folding point, but you've got to put one down the bottom as well. Now, where this is going to help, the major flaps with the images come off the picture sides on most Corgi boxes. It's different for each box, but in this case, 
that's what's going to happen. Now, of course, this flap that comes off here needs to be as wide as the other side is high. Now, these two, as you can, you can see, are different lengths, and that's okay because, you know, that's the shape of the box. But if we go to our folder where we've got our Corgi Toys flap and we copy it, we bring it back here and we paste it. We can rotate it and we can put it on here. Again, using those lines that we put on everything to make sure we're putting it in just the right spot. And you might think, okay, cool. Um, holding shift, drag it out. So it lines up. You yeah, are fantastic. I'm halfway there. Zzz, wrong. Because this may not be. Let me get a little arrow. Okay. So as indicated, this arrow, this length, needs to be the same as this length. And I'll, you know, sometimes it'll look like it's right. And then when you actually put it next to it, and it could be real close, but that's not even close, is it? And you're gonna print that and try and put it together and it's gonna be too short, it's not gonna work. Okay, so get rid of that, get rid of that. Right, so how we're gonna guarantee that this isn't too short or too tall for this side, we're gonna get this side. We're gonna highlight, drag, so we've got both lines in our cut thing we're going to control c to copy it control v to paste it then we're going to come over here to our little rotate things rotate at 90 degrees okay groovy then we bring that down we can put it up there it doesn't really matter but come down here and because we've got those lines there bring this line over bingo click it it's set in place and we now have a line exactly where we need that end flap to go. So, we'll highlight a little bit of that, rip out here and go all the way. Okay. Now we've got a line where we need that flap to go. So let's go back there now. Control C, copy it again, come back to your main one. Control V, paste it in there. Okay, let's bring it over. Now, obviously, the corgi flaps, when you're doing this side, use the blue side of the flap. Other side, use the yellow side. So, we'll rotate this. We want to rotate it left. Okay, we'll zoom in. Bring it down here to the bottom. If you're finding it hard getting like precise movements, you can get it close and just use your arrow keys. There we go. Now we know it's where we want. Now, before you click it, we've got the same issue we had with the side panel when we stuck it on. It was too small. Well, this is obviously too small. So, what do we do before? We hold down the shift key. We click this one and we drag it up. Now, this time, we want to drag it as far as we can for whichever side it hits first, then we're going to stop. Okay. All right. I'm going to click that. And here we didn't have to, it's only left a little bit of a gap. Sometimes they can go to a little bit too big. Um, sometimes whatever so what we're going to do now is highlight this end piece and again because we've got lines everywhere 
we can go, you know, hold down shift or you can just hit the arrow keys if you want to do it slowly. Do, 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 do. Making sure that this line lines up with that line. Click it off. Cool, party time. Now, obviously we've got that gap, so drag and highlight a bit. Copy, paste, drag it up. And we now know that this side is exactly the same as that side and everything's awesome. Okay, now, now we've got this one that we know is the right size. Let's highlight it. Whoops, that's not gonna be any good. Peter, you too. You can go, actually go a little bit further if you want on that way. Just go in here, make sure you've got it right on the line. Okay, it's not, we're a little bit over, so we'll just allow for that when we go over the other side. We're gonna copy it, we're gonna paste it. Now we can bring that over here, up to our other side of our picture panel. Okay, we're gonna go in. And I haven't gone all the way over if you remember because I went a little bit short. Quick look, make sure it's all good there and click it off. Okay, while we're here, We'll highlight our line and we'll drag it down. We're making all these extra lines so when it comes to folding and cutting, we've got reference points. And you'll hardly see them when they're printed. Now, remember when I did this a little bit higher than before? Oh, that annoys me. I'm a little bit anal with these things. You realize that little bit there doesn't matter, but I'm gonna get rid of it because, okay. So of course, this is the side of the box, but we need a flap on the end that actually holds it in there. So that's why I copied a little bit extra over the line. Click, drag, highlight part of it. And like the top bit before, you want about halfway along, like, half the thickness of your flat, let's drag it out. And these messed up colours here, that adds, you know, that isn't going to matter because that's not what you're looking at. Can go back to brushes, get the pixel pen. You might say, why don't you just get a line, you know, and draw a line along there, Peter? It's just, it's too hard to be accurate for me. So I'd rather draw a few pixels and, and drag them out, then I know they're exactly right. Okay. Okay. All right, now we need to do one on this side as well. So like we did there, we'll copy a bit. Control C, copy, Control V, paste. Bring it over. Making sure it's lined up, we haven't got any white parts showing, and just drag it out a bit. And as before, get a little pen, whoops, oh jeez. Drag it down, drag it up, and that part is done. We're just a little bit closer. Now, give yourself a little bit more working room, and I'm going to go back, and I've made some, you know, flaps, like generic corgi flaps, and I just improved these. Uh, that control, 
C to copy and paste them here. All right, now just gonna bring them up here so I can cut and grab them as I need them. All right. So I tried, I replicated the writing that was on the, is on the inside flap of Corgi Toys. This is something new that I've done. Normally I just put yellow and blue ones and didn't worry too much, but I thought I'd have a bit of fun and all oh, these ones, you know. Watch PB's Retro Restorations. Like, share and subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to if you haven't already. Um, okay, so we'll go here. We'll do the call, you know, click Corgi Toys one first. Highlight it. You will also notice here, viewers, Control C to copy that, of course, that there is a left and a right flap. They've got a more severe opening on one side. That's the side that your curve of your end flap goes in. So now we've copied that. I'm going to bring it down here. Paste. And obviously the yellow ones go on this side. So the bigger gap is going towards that flap. So we want to spin it left. We'll zoom in, bring it up. Get it in there. This doesn't matter too much so long as you don't wreck your other lines. Okay, now in this case, it's too big. But the process is the same, of course. Hold down shift, click your little square and drag it in until you're within the parameters of your other line and click it off. And that's close enough. Now we've got one flat. Go up here, get the other one. Copy paste we want this big side facing the flat so we're going to rotate this one left going to bring it up when you feel it's in the right spot but you should know that it's in the right spot because you've got all these lines okay Go up, and because this one's too big, it's the same principle, except we're gonna drag it the other way. Hold down shift, squeeze it down. I already said that with the other flaps. I don't know why I said it again, viewers, a bit thick sometimes. Um, it's there, click it off. And we've got the two flaps on that side. We're gonna repeat that process with these two. I'll do those and we'll come back. Obviously, maybe not so obvious, with this one, of course, we want this facing that flap, but you've got to think it's wrapping around. So we're going to rotate this on left. So that's pointing that way. And it'll be pointing at that flap when it's, you know, all stuck together and, okay. Always remembering to hold down that shift key. Click it off. Have a little mental in my brain that it's gonna work when it's all okay. Now, we're gonna get our canvas, because we're done here. We're gonna crop it down to those lines without going over the lines, because we still want those when we print it out. So bring it down. Go easy because if you go too far, you're gonna have to start again. Okay. Remember we want that black line still on there. Okay. A 
And there we go. We'll move on to the next step. I'm just trying to think of anything else I need to tell you here. Make sure you save it, of course, where I'll give it a proper you know, title. Usually Corgi, talk, Corgi, the number, what the model is. Carton, that way I obviously know which one it is and I'll be able to save it and share it with friends and all that stuff. So here's our handiwork, looking pretty good if I do say so myself. Now we're going to move on to the most important part, which is obviously printing it out. Now, there's a few important things to remember when printing to make sure we get it right. But the first thing I do is open up Word. I set the margins to narrow and I get the image and I paste it in. These larger cartons, you're going to want to rotate them. There's an option up here. Just rotate it 90 degrees and you'll be good. When it comes to working out how big your carton needs to be, obviously the sides need to be as long or a little bit longer than the model is. And then you have to allow for the flaps on the end. They should probably be as long as the model is high, remembering that it's going to have tyres and be sitting a little bit high and give you a little bit more room. You're never going to get it exactly spot on. So don't try, just get it close. So go into the last tab on the end, I can't remember what it's called, sorry, uh, and go down to the one that says size and position. Now, if you want to have a guesstimate, if it's a larger model box like this Mercedes one, uh, you want to set your width to be about 20 centimetres. But before we print it, I'm going to talk to you about something that is very important and will potentially change your printing life. When you go to print it, and your computer asks you which printer you want to use. You probably only got one, but you'll notice a part underneath will say printer properties. Now somewhere in that printer properties, you're going to have something like this, like detailed settings. And then you're going to see this reduce in large. That's what you're looking for. They're all different for different printers. And it'll usually say fit to print size. You want to change that to off. Change it to off every time. And every time you switch your computer on or go to open up the window and print again, you'll probably have to change it back to off because it'll try and be a mongrel and change itself back. But now I'm going to show you why. Okay, I'm going to show you why it's important to set your reduce in large to off uh, because if you don't, you're going to have problems. Okay, so you've got your image. Let's, for argument's sake, say you've set it to be 20 centimetres across the bottom there but you haven't switched that off. You're going to print that out. It's going to be, it won't be 20 centimetres. It'll be something less. It can be a little bit sometimes, sometimes it can be quite substantial. Uh, it's what used to cause me all sorts of grief when making my own decals. You'd measure the model. You think, right, that's five centimetres. Set it to five centimetres, print it out, and it'd be three and a half centimetres. And it would used to drive me insane, viewers. So anyway, once I work this out, it changed my life. Hopefully it'll change yours too. Okay, so this is one where I've set reduce enlarge setting to off. Exact same image, still measured at argument's sake for 20 centimetres. Here it is next to the one where it was still switched on. You can see it's almost a centimetre smaller which I don't have to tell you is going to cause you problems when you print it out, make your car, and then try and fit the car in you measured it to. It won't fit, will it, because it'll be too small. Anyway, so really important to switch that off. That's why I'm telling you, and that's why I'm hammering it in, because it caused me all sorts of grief. So took another couple of test prints, got it to the right size, you know, set the model physically on the panel make sure it's going to fit that's what i do it needs a bit of fiddling and for noodling and then when you're all set and ready to go you can print it in color on your card and good times will ensue so the other reason for putting the lines on here viewers is we've got edges, well, it's, it's the reason why we put the lines on there. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, and we can line up your little cutting blade and know that you 
got it straight because even after you printed it it's not always guaranteed to be straight on the card it's this way you can keep it close okay I'll try not to make this too boring viewers I'll speed it up where I have to or I think it's because normally when I put these in the video I, I speed up 10 minutes of footage into four minutes so you're not sitting there bored out of your skulls okay once I've trimmed the edges off and I've got it like that I find it's I've been finding it's better to do the creases before you start cutting the rest of it okay um, this one comes with this stuva and this board has got and I'm sure you can see them all these little grooves in it running perpendicular down here so what I do is I get these black lines that we put on here before line one up in the middle line the other end making sure that you're in the same groove and you're not like skew if okay that one that one the other thing to remember too, viewers, if I haven't told you this before, and something I used to think was, okay, well, you, you don't want to damage the image. You want to score it from behind, and that's wrong. You want to do it this way. Uh, it's just how it works. Okay, so I get it in about the middle. Get it started and just through. Do it a couple of times. But not so much as you start wearing the card down. So now I've got that line. The fold through the back. I'll do that to these other ones. So the lengthway ones, then we're going to do the other way. Okay, that's all our points folded. Now we can start cutting. And of course, because we put these grooves in now, it'll kind of sit in the slot where the blade goes, making it a little bit easier to line it up. Sometimes it doesn't always work out, viewers, and you might have to start from scratch, but that's okay. No one's an expert the first time out. And if you start telling yourself you're an expert the hundredth time out, that's when you're going to start making mistakes, isn't it? Hey, Fabs. Okay. Yeah. That one 
I haven't quite gone close enough. That's a shame because that's It's better, but I've probably gone too far now and ruined it. But that's okay. Can't win them all, can we? So I've seen some people like, and Paul Restorer likes to freehand these, but he's got nice, sharp knife and steady hands. I don't. So we'll get that out of the way. And this is the where the point where I get these. They're called scissors. And I cut the rest of them. Because these are supposed to have a little bit of a curve to them anyway, these boxes. Not everyone does. If these were matchbox cartons, I would just be slicing them as well. But it's not. Okay, so once we've got it like this, viewers, we're almost there. We're almost home free. Now, these corners here, you can just freehand them or cut them, or you can get one of these that Mrs. PB had from her scrapbooking days. It's a hole punch, except it doesn't, well, it doesn't punch a hole. It punches a round corner. So you've seen me use this before. And I realise that factory corgi flaps aren't quite like this, but you know what? You're not fooling anybody with reproduction cartons. They're just, you know, brighten your shelf up, a bit of fun. You see that? Nice and straight edges. Everything's wonderful. One of the few guarantees in my life, viewers. <laughs> anyway, so after you've done that, you want to fold these, like fold them over and squeeze, like otherwise they'll bulge out a bit. <laughs> Um, do all of them. Okay. Now we've, which ones didn't I fold? I didn't fold it this way, did I? What an idiot. If you've stuck around this long in the video, you must be enjoying it, so. I'm going to presume you're all saying, yes, Peter, we're loving it. We just can't hear you. So, if we've cut everything properly, and because we laid the groundwork on the computer, measuring everything so it was all accurate and tickety-boo, then this section, we should have no problems when we're folding it up. You might have to trim the edges of these if it's a bit tight. Uh... I often have to do that. Oh, I'll tell you what, viewers. First go. Who's, who's, who's your cardboard box god? Um, so there we are. The next step in the process is obviously to glue it. But I'm going to do that in the shed. I'll see you in there. I use this stuff, Zap Canopy Glue. I realise it's not really made for this, but I'm sure it's just white glue. I mean, how many different types of white glue can there be in the world, viewers? So I imagine any of your Mod Podge or your... I've had a couple of people say, why don't you use double-sided tape? And I did try that. I used to make... Um... I tried making reproduction Nintendo cartridge boxes and I used double-sided tape on them and they've all nearly fallen apart now. 
so I'm not sure that was the best the tape just starts letting go make sure it's lined up before it starts setting You might want to leave it flat underneath something heavy overnight. Sometimes I do. Sometimes it dries really quickly and it's... That's usually enough. Of course, the other important thing is to make sure that the car you've made it for fits. I have done that before, viewers. Beauty, that's going to be fine. And that, dear viewers, is how I do cartons. Um, you might get some little edges that need trimming up or Anyway, that's it. I hope that's been informative to you. I hope it's helped you, inspired you to have a go yourself. Uh, you could probably do a better job than I can. I don't know. Um, if you'd like any of the templates I've made or any of my, you know, the corgi parts, like the side flaps or anything, just shoot me an email and I will be happy to pass them on to you can't print them out for you and post them and all that stuff it gets a bit but um if i can offer any more help or assistance please get in touch happy to help thanks for watching to the end if you've liked this video give it a thumbs up leave a comment check out some of my other videos please consider subscribing and don't forget to click the bell for alerts that way you too can be swept away to a world of pb magic every time a new video drops and that's word, Joe. Have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and I hope to see you all next time here on PB's Retro Restorations. Bye!